let the spirit come in. Amen. Amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters in Christ. How are y'all doing on this wonderful Sunday and on this beautiful Father's Day? And there is no father greater to celebrate than our Father who art in heaven. Can I get an amen from you guys? Can I get an amen? Now, my earthly father passed away in December of 2022. But it is a comforting thought to know that my earthly father is in heaven with my heavenly father. It makes me feel much better inside of my heart. And just like on Mother's Day, here on Father's Day, I have a message that I don't understand why God picked today for this message, but He did, and we're going to go with it. It's not the most fathery day message, but it is a message from God. I don't know yet what I'm going to call it. I'll let God decide that. It's either going to be demonic possession or power preaching. A lot of people will watch my videos and they'll think I'm angry or I'm preaching with a lot of anger or, or I look angry or I'm, I'm being angry, but really what I'm doing is I'm preaching with authority. Really what I'm doing is I'm saying things with authority, saying things that I need to say. Because Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when He walked this earth and walked into the synagogues, He spake with authority. And sometimes we need to. We can't just always up here giving everybody the feel good. Sometimes we have to speak with authority. And I'm going to show you the reason why today. I'm going to show you why as a reverend, pastor, minister, bishop, priest, that sometimes you have to walk from behind the pulpit and speak with authority. Holy Spirit, work through me. I ask that you feed this message to whoever needs to hear it today, whether it be a pastor, whether it be whoever. Whoever needs to hear this message. Maybe it's somebody that's going through this exact topic today. I ask that they read this message, feel this message, and receive this message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Amen. If you got your Bible handy... We're going to go to Luke 4, 31 through 37. Luke chapter 4, 31 through 37. Now, I've memorized this whole scripture here, but I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version for you guys. Just to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to go over when it comes to power preaching, preaching with authority, preaching with power, demonic possessions. They are real. They are real. They really happen. I showed a video just the other day of a woman that killed a little boy and her father was up there saying, please don't let this monster out on Belle. And when you look in that woman's eyes, you can see Satan. She was possessed. I believe in exorcisms. I do. Now, do I believe that Hollywood has made them look a little bit more than what they are. I don't know. I've never done one or seen one, so I can't judge that. But I believe in them. I absolutely believe in them. I know evil spirits can enter your body. I know evil demons can enter your body. And I know Satan has a band of demons that run this earth and enter people all the time. And there ain't a preacher in the Baptist community and there ain't a preacher in the Orthodox community and there ain't a preacher in the Catholic com community. Tell me any different. Alright, starting with verse 31, chapter 4 of Luke. This is talking about Jesus. Then He went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching to them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at His teaching, for His word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst it came out of him and it did not hurt the man. It did not hurt the man. Now, what did that specific Bible verse say that caused the demon to show his face to the synagogue? 
What did Jesus do that caused that demon to stand up because he just couldn't take it and show his face to the synagogue? Jesus spoke with authority. And sometimes as a minister, you need to speak with authority because maybe somebody watching this video has a demon in them now. So when you speak God's word, speak it with the authority God gave you. Amen. We must understand that demonic possession is a real thing. There is mental illness separate from possession, but they also intertwine with one another. We must preach with powerful voices, with God's word, no matter if people got gets anger out of it or whatever they want to say or you're snarling your nose or you're making evil eyes or whatever. Listen, I'm not saying every time you go give a sermon you need to preach like you're screaming at somebody. Sometimes you need to be easy and soft. It's really up to what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. It's really up to what Jesus Christ of Nazareth tells you to do. But I'm telling you, me and my wife read this article where this preacher had to speak with authority and he himself didn't even know. He realized he had a demon in him and he hit the floor because he spoke with authority. He spoke God's Word with authority. Demonic possession is a real thing. It wasn't made up by Catholics. It wasn't made up by Orthodox or Hollywood. It happens. And yes, doctors confuse it with mental illness. And we confuse it with mental illness. But sometimes, if you look deep enough in someone's eyes that is, that is possessed by an evil demon or an evil spirit or an unclean spirit, you'll see it right here. You'll see it like you did on that video of that woman I showed. You'll see the young clean spirit looking through her eyes. That's not her eyes looking. That's the unclean spirit. That's the evil demon. Psychiatrist wrote a book saying the psychiatry department needs to have an evil sector. He believed it so much that he said that all psychiatry departments across all universities need to have a sector just for, for evil and demonic possessions. Because he said he could always tell the difference between a mental illness, bipolar, PTSD, or schizophrenia. He could see if that's what they had, or he could see if it was a demonic possession just by looking in their eyes. He wrote a book. That's exactly what he says in the book. Now the Bible speaks about demonic possessions numerous times. It happens numerous times back then. And the world is more demonic now, so what makes you think it ain't happening today? Why do you not? How can you believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth but not believe in demonic possessions? Some of my Baptist friends would strongly disagree with me. I just don't understand how you guys don't see it. How you can't see that some people aren't mentally ill. They're literally infested with demons. And sometimes it's more than one. Sometimes it's a legion. Mental illness, demonic possession, they can be two separate things. But they also can be combined as one. And the Pharisees, the Pharisees, the enemies of Jesus, even knew that demonic possession was possible. And they knew that demons entered bodies. And yet, we're so smart in our modern culture, in our modern day, that we just think that that don't exist. But it does exist. I haven't personally ran into anyone that has had a demonic possession. I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. At least from what I've been around. But I can tell you, you got people like Ted Bundy, you got people like Jeffrey Dahmer, you got people like the Green River Killer, you got all these multitudes of serial killers that once they got questioned, they really couldn't explain why they did it. Now, can people be evil without Satan in them? Yes, but anything that is evil is of Satan. So whether Satan or a demon is inside of them causing them to do the things they're doing or whether they're doing it because they're evil because they're listening 
to Satan. doesn't really matter at this point. But I guarantee you, 50% of the serial killers in America and in the world have been possessed by demons. I guarantee it. Notice the Bible said that Jesus spoke with authority because when God speaks a word, He speaks it with authority. God did not lay back in a lounge chair on day one and said, I create the heavens and the earth. He spoke with authority. And when God created man, He didn't just lay back and chill and say, I created man in my image. He spoke with authority. And when God casted Satan down to this earth, He didn't just say, all right, shoot. He spoke with authority. And when Jesus was in that synagogue and He was teaching in that synagogue, He was preaching with power and authority and the demon couldn't contain itself. And that's what some times as a minister, reverend, preacher, pastor, priest, bishop, you've got to do. You've got to speak with authority whether that's your style or not. It really doesn't matter because it says it in the Bible. You must speak with authority, but authority don't always mean screaming. It also means you've got to mean what you're saying. You've got to mean what you're saying. And there's people that watch this video today that I guarantee you is possessed by a demon and they may not even know it. They can cause physical illnesses. They can cause erratic behavior. Whatever you're going through today, whether it be a mental problem or a demon problem, we are here to help. And we need to be here to help. We ain't called ministers to just do nothing. Oh, that's the Catholic Church belief. No, that is a true belief from the Bible, the Holy Bible, written by eyewitnesses that seen demonic possession. There is keys to notice if someone is possessed by a demon. Look deep into their eyes. Do they look lost? If you've ever ran into somebody that's addicted to methamphetamine, sometimes you'll look in their eyes and their eyes are bugged out, but they look lost. They don't look like they're really, there's nothing there. Or an Alzheimer's patient. My father had Alzheimer's. You know, when you look in their eyes, they look lost. They're, they're not there. The person you know is not there. The same thing with demonic possession. When you look in someone's eyes with demonic possession, they're not there. You don't notice your husband anymore. You don't notice your wife anymore. You don't notice your son anymore. You don't notice your aunt anymore. You don't notice your uncle anymore. You don't notice your mother anymore. You don't notice your father anymore. When you look deep into their eyes, and I mean deep, you can tell a difference. Watch for sporadic behavior. If they just randomly go up and punch something for no reason, that is a key of demonic possession especially if it's out of character for them to do so. If it's out of character for your dad to walk up and punch a machine and he does it out of the blue for no reason, nobody's fighting, nobody's arguing, nobody's mad, and he does it anyhow, that's a sign. Irritability with ridiculous stuff is also a sign of demonic possession. This is the research I've done for the past three days is demonic possessions. Irritability with ridiculous stuff. Stuff that doesn't even matter. And they get so irritated that it turns into a violent reaction. That is evidence of a demonic possession. Anger when speaking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If there is a demon possession and you're involved or you're around someone who is possessed by a demon, which really happens, let me reaffirm that for my friends here in the Protestant land, it really happens and you start speaking the name of Jesus, just speaking the name of Jesus is so powerful that it makes the demon blast out. And they have to show their face because Jesus is so much more powerful. Jesus has already trampled Satan. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. So when they hear that name, they can't contain themselves in your body no more. They can't hide in your body no more. They have to show their face. They have to. Out of character violence 
Now, if you're with someone who's been violent since you met them and you're continuing to stay with them, and I'll pray for you if you are, that is an out-of-character violence. Out-of-character violence is someone who is super nice, uh, like Mr. Rogers or something, and out of the blue one day, they just become violent and out of control. That is the sign of a demonic possession. This is not fake. I believe in exorcisms, like I said earlier. Now, whether Hollywood shows exorcisms the correct way or the exact way, I'm not sure. I've never seen one. But I can't judge that. I don't know. And I know Hollywood lies a lot. But I do believe that exorcisms happen. I've seen too much evidence. I've seen too many people. I've seen too many families. I've seen too many hurt people. The number one thing I learned about demonic possession is do not reason with them. Do not reason with them. If they're sitting here arguing with you, it's not that person arguing with you. It is the demon inside that person arguing with you. So when you're reasoning with them, you may in your head think you're reasoning with your wife, but she is possessed by a demon. So while you're reasoning with your wife, really you're reasoning with a demon. You're reasoning with a demon. Can't do that. They are not to be reasoned with. Just cast it out, just like Jesus did. Now, we don't have the power that Jesus Christ of Nazareth had. We absolutely do not have that power. We can't just go and wave our arm and a demon run out of somebody. But if we speak, like I said from the beginning of the message, with authority, we mean what we speak, and we speak in the name of Jesus, they have to leave. First, they'll show their face, and then they have to leave. First they show their face, then they have to leave. It ain't a simple, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, you have to speak with authority. Impose Jesus' authority over all demonic possessions. This is truth, folks. This is truth. We also got in 1 John 4, 1-4, through 4, it says in the King James Version, Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye, Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you that is in the world. No matter what you're dealing with right now, whether it be mental illness, addiction, demon possession, it doesn't matter. There is one thing. On this earth, in the heavens, anything you can think of that is more powerful than Satan and any of his demons, and that is God Almighty Himself. Satan couldn't even fight with God about trying to take over the throne because God just cast him down the earth. See, when God speaks a word, it happens. When God speaks something into existence, it happens. When God speaks something out of existence, it happens because God speaks with authority. So when God comes down into human form and He preaches in synagogues, He's speaking with authority. This is more of a message of a warning to people that have no faith that demon possession actually happens. I would ask you, if you feel something's wrong with you, or if you see your spouse that something's wrong with them, or your kids, or you just don't see that they're there, or something's out of place, or something's weird that's going on, go to Jesus Christ, give Him everything, and He will show you. He will come through you through the Holy Spirit and show you exactly what you need to do to fix it. God gave me this message today because He wanted me to let everybody know that as a minister, a father, it doesn't matter if you're a mother. If your child you think is possessed by a demon and they continue to show signs that they are, speak with power. Speak with power. Even anything, over anything, mental illness, cancer, addiction, anything, just speak with power. 
If somebody wants to say you're speaking angrily, then let them say it. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't speak with power, they'll never show their face. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for being my audience, but you're really God's audience. And I want you guys, if you don't know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I would love for you to seek Him. There's so much I wanted to tell you guys. Let me tell you one more thing before I go. Krishna's grave is still full. Buddha's grave is still full. Muhammad's grave is still full. Jesus Christ of Nazareth's grave is empty. Because He is the living God. He is the living God. He is the true divine. So anybody that tries to tell you that this is all mythological fake news, ask them to show you where Jesus' body is then. He's the only one out of all the religious figures in the world that doesn't reside in His tomb as bone. And I'm sorry if that offends people, but it's the truth. There is no Krishna. There is no Buddha. There is no Muhammad. They are rotting in the ground. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not.